we took everything that we knew from every Battlefield game ever made, basically, and we didn't think that we need to rewrite everything, but rather learn what we did right, what we did wrong, what we needed to improve, and there was a lot of ideas on how to improve on something that was already sounding pretty good. I'm a big fan of, of kind of an aggressive soundscape. When you do video games, you, 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 you exaggerate things, and we exaggerated almost everything in Dark Company 2. And now, I mean, we're doing a game that it sounds better, we're still keeping some of that aggressiveness, but uh, taking uh, in, into consideration that some players actually might play this game for hundreds and hundreds of hours. Battlefield 3 sounds much cleaner. It's a brighter sounding game. It's less noisy. It's easier for the player to locate stuff, to hear what's what. And it's actually a more, much more accurate portrait. We went to a very big exercise uh, that took part in the south part of Sweden with uh, tanks, helicopters, and just loads of infantry, and urban fighting, and we were just in the middle of that fight, and experience, the experience of that was quite powerful and quite intrusive. We're uh, just waiting for the ambush over here to, to advance. Uh, uh, ben is over there. Ben say, is just over here, and Marie is further down. Uh, so get uh, distances and all of that while they're progressing here. We adapted to that when we came back. We tried to analyze everything that we felt, and some of the things we thought we knew were wrong. So we took that into consideration and rewrote some stuff and redesigned some stuff uh, when it comes to guns and tanks and. And just the, the, just the sheer force of, uh, of weapons, it's uh, intimidating when you're there. I think just bring that into your speaker, that's a challenge, but we've, we've done it before and uh, we've improved on it. So we're not going for a cinematic sound, actually. Uh, we have, I mean, in single player, it's very important to do a narrative and a, and a dramatic experience. Saying Hollywood as a guideline or something, I know many people do that, and they just following what film does, but games is games. Is games. So it was, it's a pretty easy artistic choice to go with a more documentary or more real version of the world. And I don't think uh, you should aestheticize it too much. Like, um, there's so much good in reality, there's so much uh, iconic uh, sounds that you as a player or you as a human being know is there. So we don't want to manipulate that because people can decode the real world. They know, oh, that's a bird over there and this gun is like this and there's identity in everything we s are surrounded with. I don't think it's wise to go chasing af after uh, a kind of movie soundscape. It's, it's not what it is. It's, um, w there's a lot of things to learn from Hollywood. There's a lot of things to learn from designers in, in Hollywood. Um, th there's some really good ones there. But we're good at what we are making here. We've used a lot of animals in our games, uh, creating, creating falling towers. We use a, there's a lion as a tank. We're just uh, open to the source we pick, and we are really, we're really uh, dedicated to creating a, uh, an experience that will blow people away. There's a lot of misconceptions on how, how a good game should sound, and we kind of don't listen to them. Like, we, we go our own way. <laughs>